Only several hundred years ago, California was a wild frontier land of grizzlies and elk. That's just not the case anymore. The oceans are arguably some of our last pieces of true wilderness on the planet. We must learn from our management and our mismanagement of terrestrial ecosystem in order to avoid an equally devastating fate for the oceans. People have been harvesting marine wildlife from the oceans for tens of thousands of years. In fact, some scholars say that our ability to fish in the oceans and hunt other marine wildlife is one of the things that makes our species fully modern humans. But things have changed a lot. We're, there are now seven billion of us on the planet and our tackle box has evolved considerably. Nowadays we fish with helicopters, with dynamite, super trawlers, and we have long lines that can reach from Philadelphia all the way over to New York. Many indications suggest that we're now looking at the beginnings of an industrial revolution in the oceans. 200 years ago, uh, we were fishing with sail-driven ships and hemp and ropes. It was really only about 100 years ago that industrialization made it possible for us to fish almost anywhere and take almost anything. And we're using the ocean in different ways. There is aquaculture going on in places now in the open ocean that never existed before. We're using it for energy production. There's urbanization of the ocean as um, places are built in the ocean for, for humans to live in. All of this creates a habitat destruction pressure that is soon probably going to be just as important as the harvest pressure. In addition to habitat destruction and, and over harvest, climate change is one of the major threats to ocean ecosystems all over the world. And we see increases in sea level and increased storms, but we also see something unique not seen on land in the oceans, that's ocean acidification. Coastal development, aquaculture, marine traffic, seafloor mining, coastal reef degradation, and marine energy development are all increasing. Some of this marine development is necessary in an overcrowded world, but we actually have the chance in the oceans to proactively guide the hand of this development more intelligently than we did on land, so that it doesn't recklessly knock out marine species and damage the habitats upon which they depend. One of the most stunning things we did on land was to protect big areas like Yellowstone, uh, whole ecosystems and the organisms that lived inside. And that's been an approach that's been taken in the ocean as well, protecting parts of the sea with all the organisms that live inside as a way of preserving their biodiversity, but also as a way of preserving their ecological function. By controlling fishing effort, by changing the way fishermen fish so that it's not so dangerous for them and they're not scrambling for the last fish, we can have a win-win situation between harvesting the ocean and still using the ocean. In all of this, our best partner is the productivity of the ocean, the ability of the ocean to respond, to repopulate itself, and to recover ecosystems that, that we have damaged. One of the ways to think about this is that this is the century of choice for the oceans. We can choose to do everything we can to protect it, or we can leave things go as they are. And in the next century, we don't know what the ocean's gonna look like, but it won't be like this, and it won't be supporting us and other human communities the way we want it to be. The state of the world's marine wildlife is in some ways like this old abused ship, right? The there's some pieces that are broken, there's some things that are missing, there's definitely water already coming in through these cracks, we feel it sloshing around our ankles. However, by and large, the ships still float, we're still limping along forward. The issue is, that if we don't actually invest some energy in trying to put in the repairs that are needed now, these small holes are going to become big holes and our ship is going to start going down really rapidly. We're still at the helm of this ship. Maybe we're still bailing it. But what we do now will determine the future of this ship and all the wildlife in all the oceans for decades and centuries to come.